Hey guys, welcome back to a week of. I am rushing through everything this morning because as usual, I am terrible with my time management, but um, I needed to start it today because of what's happening. So um, the reason I'm rushing is because I have a meeting in 10 minutes, a very important meeting that could lead to a very exciting sponsorship for this channel that I have been waiting for. There are a few companies, there's like three companies that I'm manifesting. I put it into the universe that they will sponsor this channel. One of them has heard my calling and um, yeah, important meeting today. On that note, I do want to mention as more sponsorship opportunities arise, arise I just want to let you guys know that I do turn down a good amount of um, sponsors for this channel, primarily because I don't want to feel like I'm just accepting anything. Um, I want to make sure that everything that is being pushed on this channel is, you know, it's it's a reflection of us. Um, I feel like I've attracted the same kind of people as me. Um, I don't want to push anything on this channel that I, for one, wouldn't use myself, um, don't love, and also, most importantly, can't afford, cannot afford. I don't want to accept any products or anything that, like, the price tag is just insane and I wouldn't even be able to buy it myself. So those are sort of my, um, those are like my commandments um, in terms of like promises I want to keep to myself and to you guys in terms of sponsorships for this channel. I hope that you guys know that when creators take sponsorships, it just helps us, it helps us pay our bills and spend the time that we do on these videos. I do have a job, um, I have my own business, so taking sponsorships allows me to remove myself a little bit from my business in terms of time spent. Anyway, right after the meeting, I'm going to zoom over to Alice's to pick her up and we are gonna head over to North Shore Tropicals because today is a very, very exciting day. If you guys follow uh, Lauren, you'll know that she opened up pre-orders for two plants, uh, the Philodendron Spirit of Sancti and the Philodendron Burley Marx's Flame. She offered pre-orders in three different sizes, small, medium, large, and Alice and I got a Burly Marxist Flame to share. As I speak, Lauren should be clearing them at the airport right now, so we're gonna head over to her shop. We're going to unbox with her and um, see all the plants that came in, and I am so excited because you guys, I have not seen, these are like my top two wishlist plants, and I have never seen them in person. So today is gonna be the day that I see them, and I feel, I feel like, I have butterflies, like I feel like I'm meeting someone famous. I don't know, it's such a strange feeling, but I'm super pumped. Um, also, this is gonna be my first time driving to her shop. Sorry, Sniffle, Sniffles McGee is up there. So he, he, see, you made me lose my train of thought, you, you guy. Uh, oh yeah, so it's my first time driving there. Alice always drives us because I'm very scared of driving in Vancouver. But um, every time that I've been in Alice's car lately, I've wanted to violently throw up. Um, I get really, really motion sick. So today I'm going to try and brave it and drive us out there. She is going to be doing a Q&A um, in the car. So if you want to see how the drive went, you can head over to her channel and um, watch it. I will link it in the description. And yeah, um, I think while I don't think that she's gonna really need both of us to like go through pre-orders and stuff So I might if Alice is okay with it. I might sort of let her take the reins on that I'll film a little bit for you guys to show you what they look like and then I I think if if Lauren lets me if she allows me um, I want to do some plant plant chores in the shop. Maybe get things cleaned up. Maybe do some watering um, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm in the plant chore mood today and I specifically love doing it at Lauren's shop. I don't know if Lauren can tell by now, but like, I don't know. I just, I get so happy when I'm able to like sweep her floors and wipe down counters and I don't know. It's just... It's just fun. So it, it's like I'm playing pretend like I own a store. So anywho, today should be exciting. Today should be fun. Hopefully I don't get sick. Um, it is going to be a long day. I don't know if I'll be filming any more after uh, North Shore Tropicals. Like there are things that I need to do here, but um, I don't know if I'll have energy for it. And since I still have two minutes to spare, I have this guy here sitting. He was getting some sun. Sorry. Ugh. Oh my gosh, you can't see it. How about this way? <laughs> a little bit better. I need like a white backdrop. 
But you guys, look at this freaking plant. I just fall more in love with my tortum every day. Like the leaves are getting so big, but it's just the most precious plant. Like seriously, I like this is hands down my favorite plant in my collection. If I could only choose one, it's gonna be this guy. And I've been manifesting another one because this one is currently growing in my plant room. Honestly, I would love to grow one maybe in my kitchen or over here somewhere, <laughs> sorry, fudge. Um, or even in my bedroom, maybe all three, I don't know. But I just feel like I'm, I'm, I'm in need of multiple of this plant. And I don't even think Lauren has any tortum because I would literally snag it in a heartbeat. But how fun, how fun are you? You are like the cutest thing ever. And I just like love her growth pattern. And look at the back, so magical. I swear, if you, sorry. If you are on this channel and I can influence you to buy any plant in the entire world, fill it out to them, please. Please get one, it will change your life. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna go. And uh, I think the next time I'll see you is either with Alice in the car or at the shop. I'm just gonna start filming. Yeah. Do either of you guys want to be in it? I don't mind. I don't mind either. She's rolling. Would you guys have something? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to take a picture? Yeah. I know. Look at us. I know. Did you plan that? No. 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 Not at all. <laughs> this box is huge. Okay. You're so. <laughs> Hey guys, it's been a while. <laughs> She's back. I'm back. So I have a very exciting box. So we're gonna open it up and see what we got. And I have, you probably know these two, but. Lots of Frankie. That, Thank that you. was rude. Um, two types of plants in here, but we have a few different sizes. So we're just gonna quickly show you guys the different sizes. Yeah. So this guy. So this one oh is it's so, so cute. So Burl Mark Slave. These plants have kind of been what plants that I wouldn't say they were on a wish list, but they were plants that I definitely had on my radar. And again, I was not spending the money that they were. So now I actually was been reached out by this supplier to buy these at a really great price. And just quietly grabbing. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> this one here is a philodendron spiritus sancti. They're so cute. Oh my gosh, there's like a whole family. Yeah. Oh, oh, there's like really no damage to the leaves. No, it's surprising for not being very... wrapped in it. Yeah. <laughs> Jesse? <laughs> Jesse? Your baby is here. <laughs> okay, so this is a medium spiritus here. And then this one. Show. Oh my god, it's so narrow. Oh. I can't even get it in frame. Wow. So. <laughs> it's a huge fan. <laughs> You're number one fan. So great to meet you. It's so great to meet you. The texture on these leaves are just like, they're so thick and gorgeous. Oh, oh my goodness. It's all smooshed up from being packaged. But I'm starstruck. Oh my gosh, look at that leaf. <gasps> <laughs> I really feel like I'm meeting a celebrity. Like, we've known you for like uh, we've for three years. Only ever seen you photos. Look at this leaf. Oh my gosh. So we're gonna unpack them. We'll look at the roots. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna trim anything. And then if they were really wilty, you would put them in water, yes. right? But these are really freaking perky. Yeah, and I can't get right close up, but. But there's new roots. Just yeah. Hop it. I'm so far away from it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in shock. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I'm like oh, yeah. Um, and I don't remember. Like, again, never seen them in person. Like, I see, I saw Jesse's. Like, I have that little one. Mm -hmm. But like. The texture and like the well, because mine is just super tiny, right? Yeah. And it's just like a green leaf, and then as they get bigger, they have that bait. Like, yeah, and I don't know if they all have. 
Okay, now that everything is unpacked, I can kind of breathe a little bit. I was so anxious to get in there. So I just want to show you guys some fun plants. I feel like I never like come back here and actually like talk you through it. I just show little montages, but um, she's got some fun guys. So let's see this guy. This is, oh, let me go here. Can't bend down in my old age. Okay, so this is an Ace of Spades uh, crossed with a Versicolor. I can't remember if this is a bunny plant, but also wouldn't doubt if it was. Um, I don't see a bunny tag, but still, I, I feel like this might have been a plant she got from her, and it's so delicious. Over here are more bunny plants. This one is a Lux Hybrid. It is a, who are you? Crystal Mag, oh, it's a Crystal Mag Lux. I actually don't think this was a bunny plant. I think this is one of um, her homegrown hybrids and it's humongous, holy smokes. And look at that sinus, it's so pink. And the veins are so pink too. It's showing up brighter on camera than it is in real life. It's much darker in person got the Lux back, Lux petiole. Um, this one is Crystal, oh, this is another homegrown hybrid. So this is the same as that one, Crystal Mag Lux. This one is, I think, another Crystal Mag Lux or Mag, Mag Lux. It's so dark that it won't even focus. I showed this one last time. The um, Ralph Lynam Fort Sherman. The hue of this plant is crazy. It's like a greenish blue color and it's super, super dark. This is her mother gigas. So big. I actually need to get a gigas again. I don't, I don't actually know what happened to mine. <laughs> if I have to be completely honest, it just disappeared one day from my house and I never knew where it went. I actually haven't been back here in a while because it's been blocked off because all the few times I've been back at the shop it was an event day so um all of this was blocked off but this plant is piquing my interest who is this sorry ah03 something oh poke me in the face look at how crusty and dumpstery these leaves are i really really like this it really is just like hoya land back here so many Hoyas. And look at her cute little, like, lucky charms that are growing out of these Hoyas. I don't even know what Hoyas they are, but they're growing everywhere. And look at this guy. Who is this? It's so funny. Oh, she has Gigas. Maybe I'll buy one from her today. She has some really, really pretty mandrulas right now with really nice variegation. Like, this one is so sweet and so darling and precious this one is really cute too just like nice genetics on these um on these mandrulas and then these syngoniums have actually been quite interesting to me they're so cute i think alice just brought one of these home that's a spider look at this i think this is a mad verde crossed with the varroquianum I love this so much. And then of course down here is Alvo Land where all of them go before they are sold. There's so many. Do you guys remember that Hop X that I rehabbed for her? This is that guy, it's still in the same pot, same vessel. Ah, sorry got a new leaf I'm so sorry about this lighting the the grow lights in here are pretty harsh but it looks like it's still alive and um, this is another Lux hybrid with forgetty eye so stinking dark um, yeah that's pretty much everyone in here but if she lets me I think I'm going to um, do some plant chores in the shop but look at Jesse's Spiritus. Oh my gosh. I'm so jealous. I want one of these so bad. I also want one of these really bad. I've been wanting an Aurea for a long time, but it is not in my budget, sadly.
Sorry for the weird angle, weird audio. I am recording on an old iPhone while I save up for a secondary camera. Um, but good morning. I literally, <laughs> yesterday I got home. I made myself a bowl of soup and then I um, went to sleep at 8 p.m. and woke up at 9. So I slept longer than the average person should, but I feel rested, I feel great, um, and that's all that matters. So anyway, I'm just setting up here to film a video for my plant channel. Wait, I am on my plant channel. I'm filming another plant video today since the weather has decided to cooperate um, typically I would film a video like this in my plant room, but because it's so nice out here, I kind of just want to make it work. So anyway, yeah, just getting set up and, um, I'll film some behind the scenes stuff and, uh, yeah, that's about it. This camera is crooked, but you know what? We're picking our battles today. Yesterday I had a scare. Um, at North Shore Tropicals, my camera would not turn on. The expensive guy. I had a mini panic attack because I have a sponsorship coming up that's due very soon. And I was like, oh my gosh, am I gonna have to buy a new camera just to film this sponsorship? I was panicking. Luckily, um, I did the good old CD method, you know, if, if you know when you had a CD and it would like skip and stuff, you just take it out, you blow on it and you pop it back in and it's fine. Um, so I did that with the battery per Alice's, per Alice's suggestion and it worked. Oh, my lights just turned on. So thank goodness we're fine. Um, what juice do I have? Oh, good. Okay. Anywho, I'm just gonna get this started because Pudge has a vet appointment. Where's my phone? In an hour, in about an hour. So I've gotta get going. All right, time, time. All right, I can do this. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, you voted on this week's Wednesday video. And today we are going to be doing a different form of propagation that um, I did not talk about in my propagation video, trees. And if you don't know what notching is, it's when you make um, these little tiny incisions on the stem of a plant to essentially force it into fight or flight mode. It thinks that it's being attacked, and so it starts pushing out growth from wherever um, that, that wound is. Uh, so, oh my gosh, I'm not recording. I didn't press record. I was warm up. We're warm. We're warmed up now. I'm warmed up now. Hey guys. <laughs> Today, as you can tell by the title, we are. I don't like that. I don't like it. We're gonna. Sh no. Okay. Um, I'm gonna move you guys down so that you can actually see what I'm doing. This is the bane of my existence when filming. I have no issue filming like favorites videos where I just set up the camera and I just start filming, but it's changing angles and switching things up that makes me go crazy. Okay, so um, let's go lower. All right, it's a bit backlit. Oh, shite. So I'm just gonna leave this for about five minutes um, just to get the leftover sheaths that's on the stem soft and uh, a lot easier to remove. I think that's all you guys are gonna get for now. And um, I'm gonna take Pudge to his vet appointment and then I will meet you guys when I'm back.
Alright, so, um, my veggies are so, I mean, my herbs are so, so dry. Oh my gosh. That's one thing that I'm not used to, having to water something every single day and like having them be super dramatic when they get dry. I guess if you like watering, you should grow herbs. If you're wondering why I'm in the same shirt as yesterday, it's because, oh my gosh. Um, my vet essentially will not trim his nails if he's not under, it's not sedation, but it's like these anxiety pills that he takes before long drives and it just like makes him super chill. Yeah, we have to give him one of those before he gets his nail trim. Um, but when he is on those pills, he's like really, really tired and sleepy. So right before we went into the vet, I wanted him to do a potty so that he didn't pee inside of there. And he was just like basically sleeping and didn't lift his leg all the way. And the pee got all over his harness and it just seeped into the whole thing. So we like we reeked of pee the entire time um, we were at the vet and um, he got his nails trimmed and because his, his veins are super long, like his nails grow so fast, faster than I can keep up with. We try and trim them and file them, but they just grow so dang fast. So anyway, his veins are super long, so he bled a lot during this visit, which I felt so bad for. Um, so he had blood all over his paws. So I, I, yeah, as soon as we got home, I had to just like throw him in the, in the shower and give him a bath. I had pee all over me. I had blood all over me. It was a whole thing. No, I ran out of water. And long story short, as usual, um, I just threw on this shirt since it was already dirty to give Pudge a bath since I like literally get in the bath with him. Oh no, that one's so dry. Uh, what was I gonna say? Also, it is 2 p.m. and this is around the time where I get so painfully sleepy. And I mean, when I say painfully, I mean it. Like, it hurts to be awake. Um, I don't wanna push through it. I slept so, <laughs> I slept so much last night and I'm just so tired every single time. So if you guys want an update, I know you guys can kind of see it, but on my, herbs they're definitely growing but they're really leggy look at all my kale it's just like flopped down i mean it's kind of magical that i was able to like get them to sprout but at the same time it's like is this life for me and also there's fungus gnats everywhere so i love that for me anyway those are watered so obviously we're in the plant room my light fell at 3 a.m. 3 a.m. I woke up to a banging sound and I thought it was a ghost. I did the whole thing like straight from a horror movie, didn't turn on any lights, just used my flashlight on my phone and I inspected and sure enough, this thing had toppled over. So I did pick up some new tape. I don't know if it's gonna hold it, but um, I'm gonna try and fix my light today. Also, um, I didn't even tell you what day it is. Did I tell you what day it is? It's Tuesday. Is it Tuesday? So it's Tuesday and what the significance of that is really nothing. I'm just trying to figure out what day it is because we're gonna purge on Friday. And by we, I mean the usual Alice, me, Jing, maybe Aaron. And um, I need to, I, I've already sort of started gathering plants that I wanna get rid of, but I kind of want to gather more because it doesn't seem like enough, especially after that vet visit wiped my bank account clean. That one hurt a lot, a lot, a lot. I'm going to be selling my Anthurium Xdpilatum because I cannot stand, I can't stand this plant. Um, I think this would be better for people who have a terrarium and that is not me. Um, reluctantly, I am going to be selling my Philodendron Elegans because it's just too difficult of a plant for me to grow. I'm, it just, it's not in, it's not in the works for me. Um, I have, not in the works for me, 
It's not in the plan for me. I'm sleepy. I'm so sleepy. I have two philodendron majestics, even though these are basically any plant I'm showing you right now is like worthless, especially in our market, but I just want them out. Um, I have some kind of philodendron gloriosum that is extremely thirsty. That's not what you want your gloriosum to look like. A philodendron serpent's chocolate here, a little stick that's propping, and a uh, skindapsis silver cloud. Um, so that's pretty much all I have. I might also be able to sell one of my variegated soderoi and potentially an elbow cutting. I'm not 100% sure yet, but. I gotta, if I can even make just like a hundred dollars to offset this vet bill cost because I spent like five times more than that, um, that would be great. If not, it's fine. I just want more space in here. Anyway, so yeah, that's on the list for this week. I would love to try and sell five more plants. If I can gather five more, I feel like I'd be pretty happy in terms of feeling like I'm in a good place. And I almost feel like that needs to come from my living room shelf because it is bursting at the seams. And I need to film a plant, a plant tour soon. And I just wanna get that area cleaned up a little bit before that video um, is filmed. But um, I need to figure out this freaking light situation. I struggle with these grow lights so much in this Rudsta. Everything, Rudsta, Millsbo. Everything falls down. I don't know why. I finally got some goo gone, so I think I'm gonna just like clean it up a little bit because there's like old tape everywhere and I just need to get this fixed once and for all. So I think I'm going to, whoop. I'm gonna empty this out. I wanna show you guys some highlights, but I'm doing. I'm doing a plant tour soon. I don't want to give away too much. I mean, I don't think you guys would, whoa, care to see it twice. Update on this begonia that is pushing out a million bajillion plants down at the bottom. She's still going, the leaves are getting bigger and it's getting increasingly more terrifying. The reason that I haven't cut it is because there is a sick, sick part of me that, <gasps> ew that kind of wants to see what it's gonna look like. Oh my gosh, you guys, look at this sh nasty, disgusting shit. I'm gonna freaking vomit. You can't be for real. Is this what happens when you clean your stems? Has it finally backfired? I'm sickened and disturbed. <laughs> How come no one told me begonias can do this? I feel like I just like unearthed something I was never supposed to see. I don't know what prompted this. I don't know who provoked it, but this is pure evil. I'm gonna have like a massive malachostica in just a bit because all of these little growth points are gonna turn into big leaves. Um, so I need to repot that, I think, because um, I just literally unearthed it. So, oh, you know what? I freaking hate the white balance of this camera. I can't ever fix it, I just can't. Any sudden movement and it just, the light just gets blown out. Like, why are you so dramatic? Oh, that is so sickening, dude. Okay, so uh, there's the update on that. <laughs> My Epipremnum pinnatum, Albo variegata, is finally starting to give me some real fenestrations. Like, look at this leaf. I mean, they're both kind of the same, but the variegation on this one is way nicer. Um, so yeah, finally seeing some size here, but geez, did it take a lot. Honestly, like the the amount of work I've put into this plant to what it's given me is not very much. I feel like our relationship is a little unequal here, but you know what? She's come, she's come a long way. And um, I'm sort of thinking of 
chopping it right here and then just starting over because this is on its own pole so I can just cut, pull it open, pull it open, pull it off of it and then repot it and then maybe I'll sell this bottom piece in the, the purge. Not a bad idea. I really don't need one this tall. Um, I just don't know I just don't know if that's gonna set back the growth on it. So we will see. I'm considering selling this. I'm not really sure about my love affair with the variegated burly marks anymore. I used to really, really like it, but I think that I get super overwhelmed with the growth pattern of this because it just grows from every which way and I don't know, it never grows in a way that I'm like happy with on a shelf or something. So I might just include this in the purge. It's super highly variegated. Like look at that stem. It's a beautiful stem. There's multiple growth points. Um, so yeah, it's a great plant, but I think my I think we've come to the end of the road in our friend in our relationship. Now we do have an update on the elbow that I repotted on camera. Well, that's cold. Whoa. New leaf on it. Looking Gorgina George. Um, got some roots. And uh, yeah, so far so good. I don't see any roots in the soil pole yet, which I wasn't really expecting. Um, but you know, maybe soon. And did you guys notice my little worm? I don't know if I've ever shown it on this channel. I got this from my neighbor. She got it from a local artist and I'm obsessed with it. The other elbow that I repotted on camera is also doing really well. I don't know if you guys will be able to see it. This vessel is so heavy. There is a new root there and then also some new roots at the front here. Sorry, I know it's so dark and you can't really see anything, but um, seems to be doing well. This leaf uh, started yellowing shortly after the repot, but everything else has stayed the same. So I think it's really just a transition thing. Nothing that I'm concerned about. My goodness, that's heavy. I know that you guys like seeing this on my channel, so I would have liked to wait until the plant tour. But. Let's just show you Mama, ow, Mama Friday in all her glory. She is a freaking superstar. Look at her, she's getting so huge. And you guys, her growth is like, it's so fast now. It's like right when a new leaf hardens, like maybe not even full yet, another one is already on the move. So, sorry about this crap lighting, it's not doing this plant justice, but Seriously, so, so pretty. And I, I really actually love how it's gone more yellowy green on green rather than white. Um, the leaves are actually holding on to that color more so than this white color where it turns brown. Um, I am going to be trying the TPS Silica sometime soon, hopefully when I can get my hands on it. Uh, maybe that might help with the uh, keeping of the variegation, but otherwise I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with this like minty green color that it's been giving me. It's like my dream. It's like my dream fry deck. So yeah, this this by far is the easiest alocasia I've ever owned. Not fussy. It does not require much. It is not nearly as high maintenance as my other alocasias. And when this one gets spider mites, it almost never shows me like signs that my other alocasias would so it's not really dramatic in that sense like when it has pests it's just like i mean you'll get to me when you get to me so i'm super appreciative of her in that way but it's looking like we're spider mite free right now and i hope to keep it that way i don't know why the lighting sucks ass right now my other friday is My other fried egg is also growing really well. Does this whole entire screen look really yellow to you or what? I'm infuriated. I'm pissed. Got my little disco ball here. I'm gonna um, get this cabinet cleaned and I will give you guys a better view because 
if you guys are weirdos like me and like cleaning stuff.
I think this is the last thing I'm gonna do today because tomorrow is Wednesday and I don't have a video ready for tomorrow. Um, so I need to edit the one that I filmed earlier today so I don't really have that much time left for plant things. But I think I want to handle this so that I can include it in my purge. And then tomorrow will be all purge plant stuff in terms of getting them, if they need to be repotted, chopping other plants, pest treatments and stuff. But um, I think the top is already attached to this pole because you can see there's no kind of like, um, what do you call Velcro or anything that's holding onto the pole. And I can see um, some roots. I mean, in theory, I, I'll just chop and remove, but I don't know if these roots are going to come out easily so I'm gonna chop right um, I think I'm gonna chop down here because I don't I'm gonna stick this into a new pot but I need some stem to work with so yeah I think I'll chop right there okay this is a whole plant on its own and I think I'm actually just gonna sell it like this instead of trying to like um, split it up or whatever I'll just need to repot it because I want my vessel back and I also want my pond back because I'm very low on pond and now I need to repot this top cutting okay since I'm running low on pond I think I'm just gonna put this in soil it a day and this one I can tell is I poured some tree fern fiber in here so that's kind of perfect now I'm relying on the very little roots that are in this pole so I'm gonna have to be really diligent about making sure it doesn't completely dry out or else this top cutting is toast I am expecting some lower leaves to fall because there isn't like an extensive root system up at the top, but this plant has actually been quite resilient, so it's also a little bit too early to tell. I'm going to just add a little bit of um, great white mico into my water and then I'm just going to water it. I'm not going to wet the substrate too much because there's no, there are no roots. So um, I really just want to keep this pole nice and damp and I could probably fill it too. Um, I just don't know where my spoon is. guys I am out of here um, tomorrow we have I don't really know besides like getting the purge plants together I'm not a hundred percent sure what else is um, on the agenda but I do know that my Hoyas probably are overdue for water because I don't remember the last time I watered them um, I also think I want to get this little idiota on a pole because she's doing bad things and I'm really not helping the cause so I don't know I don't know we'll see in one second okay Sherman we're gonna have to get things together so it's just 
too much. This is too much for me. Hello, friends of YouTube. Pudge, nothing is happening. Um, Pudge is a little on edge this morning. Nobody knows why. There is something attacking my eyeball violently. My ear is also clicking. So we're having a really great day, if I say so myself. Today is a lot. It's too bright. I'm okay. So obviously I missed a day yesterday. I got really caught up with work and I just did not have a single moment to film for week of. So today is going to be a kind of crazy day in terms of trying to get everything I need done. It is currently 9.30. I spent the morning doing house chores so that I can prep for filming. Um, the first thing that I want to do, obviously you saw me bring my box of laziness stuff over. That all has to get cleaned out today because I'm filming um, a repot and chat today. It seems that my repots and chat, my repot and chat that are over two hours perform the best. <laughs> I feel like I've like dug myself into a hole. Not that I don't love making long videos for you guys, but let's just be completely real here. My videos that are under 30 minutes does not matter what the topic is. Does not matter what the topic is. I could even make um, a week of plant to dos that are 30 minutes long, and it would just perform horribly. Any video that's not at least an hour long just has terrible, terrible views. It's it's a curse. I'm cursed now. One teaspoon per 32 ounces. You know, I really don't like math, so we're just going to wing it. Um, by the way, I'm using the new TPS line, the Herbs and Leafy Greens fertilizer for the first time ever. I said that I would be giving my honest feedback on it, honest reviews. And to be honest, this is my first time growing anything leafy. So I don't know what my expectations are. I forgot, I was trying to make a point. So my uh, repot and chats that are under two hours, I mean, they perform okay. If I can make it an hour and a half, it gets pretty average, pretty average um, views. If it's under that, forget about it. It's a waste of time. <laughs> Um, but yeah, today I'm aiming to make a two hour long repot and chat video, which is fine because I actually do have a lot that I need to repot and the topic that I'm going to be talking about is one that I could definitely talk about for a long time. Um, but you know, it's just, it's so tiring filming the repot and chat, honestly. Uh, where am I? I haven't even shown you guys my green onions. So I'm growing green onions in the windowsill and honestly, the growth, the growth in pond is insane. Like, I mean, green onion roots, they're foolproof. They're so easy. You can just stick it in water. And I've done the water thing many years ago, but in pond, The growth in pawn is, it's unmatched. It's crazy. And it's way more, like when I grow green onions just in water, the stalks tend to be really like floppy and soft sometimes. But these guys, these are like straight from the grocery store. It's beautiful. So I do want to fertilize it for the first time. And the reason that I chose this setup here, um, so if you watched my vlog, you'll know that I picked up these little I'm sorry, I know it's not the baby's fault for crying, but I'm getting very distracted. That's a fake cry. I know a fake cry when I hear one. Knew it. Knew it! She, I called her on her bullshit. The reason I chose it, so, you guys, my train of thought, it has just been derailed. So, okay, if you watched my vlog where I shopped for this pot, um, I specifically wanted this one for my green onions because I didn't want to do a clear vessel because then the algae would just take over. And I wanted to be able to put it in a pot with drainage in pond so that I can clean out this pot um, regularly. So I've been actually pretty good at it and it's been kind of fun every day to just like dump out the water, rinse the pond, and get it nice and clean. Um, so everything is looking really good right now, but now that it's really, really on the go, I do wanna fertilize it. So I'm just gonna be giving it 
a little bit of this um, TPS water and hopefully these guys will love me for it. Um, but yeah, anyway, green onions. Groden Pond, thank you Jane for the recommendation. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, I'm also going to be fertilizing my, my herbs here. It's really interesting, some of them I'm starting to see it's more like mature form come in um, where it has like actual little like leaves and not just these little sprouts. But I don't, oh, 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 sorry, 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 I got really excited. It's cilantro, it's real cilantro. I'll show you. <laughs> because when they all sprouted, I was like, oh, they all look the same. But look at the little cilantro leaves. Oh my god. You guys are so cute. And um, what do I even have here? Kale. The kale looks really, really awful. The kale is is bad. Um, the kale, like I'm almost tempted to just chop it back. I don't know what would happen, but like I don't think that my kale is supposed to look like this necessarily. Like she's a little droopy. But it's really interesting. Some of them are starting to really take form and look at the little hairs. This is my radish. This is all very exciting, but just all, it's so foreign to me that I have no clue what I'm doing. And I can't believe I grew a cilantro. Okay, so I'm just going to water these really quickly and move on with my day. So like I mentioned, gosh, I just completely, like I went all around town with my thoughts. <laughs> we're back, we're back where we started. So I'm filming a repot and chat today, a very long one, which means I'm probably gonna have a lot of vessels and like dirty substrate after this repot and chat. So I just wanna make sure that everything in my box of laziness is cleaned out and put away so that things are not too overwhelming. Um, because if I don't wash my box of laziness now, I never will until it has taken over my entire plant room. So that's what I gotta do today. Today is also, I gotta handle the purge stuff. I have someone, I have a friend coming sometime today to pick up some cuttings. Um, she had been looking for a certain kind of ripsalis and um, I, I just offered my, my plant to chop for her and um, yeah, she's gonna come by sometime today to grab them. So I do need to take those cuttings. My Hoyas, <laughs> they needed to be watered like two days ago. But luckily I feel like Hoyas, when they're super dry, they like push out a ton of growth, growth, growth. But that needs to happen today. Um, I'm just gonna be, honestly, I'm gonna be filming until tonight, probably. And I'm gonna be, Freaking exhausted. Um, I think the only thing I'm gonna do tomorrow for week of, to be honest, is showing you guys um, how the purge went. Wait. Oh yeah, frick, tomorrow's Friday. Okay, yeah, it's to show you guys how the purge went. That's gonna be it because I think after today, after today I'm gonna be absolutely spent and tomorrow I need to film for the vlog. So, it's just a crazy, crazy week. The plan for the next few minutes, I'm going to time lapse this whole thing. I'm going to shove my headphones in. I'm going to get all of this stuff washed because if I talk during it, we're never, we're going to be here all day.
just a few outstanding things that I need to do before I start filming um, my repot and chat. Um, I want to, I'm not sure what time my friend is going to show up. So I want to get these cuttings sorted for her already, just in case I have to quickly run down and meet her. So this is the Ripsala cell corneoids that I'm going to be chopping from. If you guys watched one of my repot videos, you would have seen me split this guy into half. So this is only half of what I used to have. I, I mean, this one is a fairly fast grower. I'm really not worried about like not having a full plant. I'm a slight behind me. pissing me off. I've already let her know that they're going to be unrooted just because I don't feel comfortable unpotting this thing again since it was just repotted not too long ago. So I'm kind of looking. Um, the back area here is getting a bit bushy and wild so I think that I can spare some. This thing is shedding like crazy. I'm not really sure why. Got this little piece here, which is actually a really good size. Knowing this friend, she prefers bigger plants, and to my knowledge, she never cuts her plants. I don't really know what she does with them, but she's not a chopper. So I'm gonna give her a little bit more. Maybe we'll go over here. This is so cute. It looks like a little weeping willow. Sorry for Pudge's snoring, he actually needs to go out. I think I'm gonna chop back here and just give her this whole step. So she's getting a hefty size plant. So all of this is going to her. It doesn't look like much in this little cup, which is the most giant bubble tea cup ever, but this is, honestly, this could fill in like a six inch pot once it's rooted. And um, yeah, she still looks really full, like nothing happened. Um, so I'm gonna pop this back in the windowsill. Oh my gosh, it's shedding so much. Okay, and then the last thing I'm gonna do, this is what I have been trying to do since, sorry, I'm all over the place. I've been trying to be better at prepping everything for these repot and chats before I actually start filming. Before, it was absolute chaos. Like my process was not refined at all. It took me all day to film like an hour and a half repot and chat and that was just not working for me. So now um, I actually take the time to prep everything that I'm gonna repotting, that I'm, that I'm going to be repotting. So that means that I grab the plants that are gonna be repotted, I figure out the vessel that they're gonna be going in beforehand, I prep all of my substrates, um, I grab everything that I need for it, meaning my scraper, make sure my shears are clean, um, I've got a trash bag nearby, I grab my Myco, so it's a whole, it's a whole thing now. Oh, I missed so bad. Okay, so I know just on the top of my head, oh, there's so much perlite here, I don't know. Off the top of my head, and I'm very scared about this, but I think, let me move you up a little. I think... Today's the day that Mama Tordum is going to get repotted and I think chopped. Per my recollection, I have been redirecting aerial roots into the soil for months now, hoping that it'll create its own little root system for the top cutting so that I can chop the bottom, not to sell. I would, my, my dream is to have a Tordum in every room, so I need like four more. Um, so this guy I think is going to be repotted today. It's not super root bound, but I want to get it into no drainage because this actually dries out really fast and I'm not into it. There is currently no new leaf on the way, which is a surprise. So I think it's going to be like the perfect opportunity to get this repotted. Another one that I want to repot. And I feel like I just repotted this one, but my Mexicanum is growing out of freaking control. I'm not going to go too in depth about it because then I'm just going to be repeating everything I'm saying in my repot and chat. Um, missed again. Fudge. Pot size to plant size, not, it is, it's not, the ratio is not there. So uh, yeah, this guy I think is going to be repotted and I'm trying to brand, brand 
this repot as a repot of some of my most prized plants. So definitely two of those. Um, I wanted to include my scalp rum into the repot and chat, but <laughs> freaking freaking heck. So you can see this Honka Mama is coming in. Um, this new leaf just came in and then another one is on the way. Uh, there are three different plants in here. I potted one of the offsets in here and then another corm just kind of sprouted and grew so I just left it. But she's doing really good. Um, again, another one of my super easy alocasias. I, I know that she'd probably be fine if I repotted her with an emergent leaf, but I'm just not going to risk it. Another one that I think I'll be repotting today is my Patriciae. It is by no means um, root bound at all, but I haven't really been liking this setup too much. This soil, my patty is a thirsty little hoe, okay? She's so thirsty, which is why she has such a damp mix. But for some reason, I'm just not feeling great about it. I feel like at this point, there should be way more like brand new roots and nice roots. So I kind of just want to refresh it, get into get it into um, different soil and uh, probably the same kind of setup. I might redo the pole. I'm not 100% sure yet, but um, yeah, this is another one that I've been wanting to address for some time. This one has to happen. This one always has new leaves coming in, so I'm never gonna find a time where it's just like asleep. So I'm gonna do my Abovada too because she has been needing new pants for a long time. Like the size of this pot in comparison to how large this plant is, I mean honestly it's probably fine, but it is a nightmare to try and clean this thing. I hate it. So I'm gonna get it into something larger. And uh, again, like I mentioned, I'm aiming for like a two hour long video. So I think I need more. I think this, looking at it, this is probably only like an hour's worth of Repotting. I forgot that I have a bunch of Ethereum that need to be repotted like yesterday. So, um, Pudge needs to go out this way. He keeps coming back in here, snarling. Um, so my Nigro Lemon MGG, I am so terrified. I'm so terrified to re repot this. It's still in the same pot that Amanda gave it to me in. Um, same substrate. It's in tree fern fiber, but I think I'm gonna do a tree fern fiber soil mix, and um, we're just gonna we're just gonna try because it's too small. And look at this root, and I'm so sorry if you do end up watching this repot and chat, you're gonna see this whole bit twice. This one looks like it's got some spider mites. Um, I need to finally repot my my hybrid from Lauren. So that's one. This is one of my favorite seedlings from my seedling batch. It looks nothing like my other seedlings at all. And I just want to keep this one going, but it's in pure, pure tree fern fiber. It dries out so freaking fast. And then last is my original Politiflorum that is in the tiniest little McDonald's cup. McDonald's cup. Um, so I want to get this repotted because the new leaf was pretty stunted. It was this one. This was the one that Alice grew for me, the last one, and this is me. I'm telling you, Pull Out Florin just freaking hates me. I feel like this, I feel like this might be enough for a video that's long enough because I'm also going to be doing like pest wipe downs and stuff. I'm going to be giving them the whole spot treatment. So, alright, now that I have my plants, I need to choose vessels. So, I just washed a few and then I have some over here. I think the most important one in this entire repot is my tortum, of course. And I'm not even sure if a vessel that's gonna be big enough. I have been repotting things like crazy and I have nothing. Um, let me grab some of the vessels that I just washed. So for my tortum, I kind of wanted to do something bigger, but I actually think this might be fine. Once I get all that soil off, I feel like it's gonna fit. Cause it's not super root bound. And honestly, this is about the same size. So I'm gonna just assume this guy for the tortum for now. If it ends up not working, I will literally uproot someone. Someone's gonna get kicked out because tortum takes priority. Now for my nigrolaminum GG, hmm. It's really tiny, it's not a huge plant. Like, I actually think even this might work, but the stem is 
probably gonna stick out once the substrate is in. I could even do something like this or potentially, this is slightly taller, I think. Oh, it's almost the same size. Okay, I'm gonna, oh my gosh. I'm gonna assume either this one or this one for the, for the Nigro Laminum GG. This one is super teeny, 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 tiny. I think I could do this guy for my seedling. Another seedling can go in, oh my gosh. I would go to the thrift store and grab more vessels, but I am so, so poor right now. This guy can go in here. It's not gonna be that much of a size up, but it's still something. So we're gonna just try to squeeze it in there. And then my pally, I wanna do it into a tall vessel because right now I have it hanging in an EXO because of how long the leaves are. So I think this one might be fine. I could even go taller because it's that leaf is gonna hit the bottom. So I think I'll do this. It's quite a large jump in terms of size, but I think I might do sort of a Leka situation down at the bottom and we're gonna just make it work. Oh my gosh. I feel like I wanna put my patty sort of in the same situation, something taller because of the leaves. Um, this one is slight, oh, this one is like a, almost about the same size. Um, so I'm gonna just go straight from here to here and um, call it a day. My neighbor, my neighbor who I've never talked to, who moved in after me, if you're watching this, bro, you don't need to slap You do not need to slam your doors all the time. You can close it gently. Okay, now that I'm done being a raging Karen, this one, this one can actually go in here. I don't think it needs to be sized up all that much. I mean, it probably does, but um, I think it's gonna be okay in here. I'm gonna assume. My albabata is in a vessel this size, so I need to go larger. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, you know? I need a larger vessel. Someone's gotta give up their pants. I'm so sorry, one of you has got to give up your pants. Oh, I think I see it. it oh, no, I don't like that one. Um, frick. If this is what I've decided, actually. I think, well, frick, I'm gonna cut my tortum, but I think my tortum will go in here because she's she's a hefty little lady. And I think my abovada will go into one slightly larger, not a lot larger, but slightly. So that's gonna be my plan. Now that I've got all the plants, oh my gosh, I need to clean up in here because I need to set up my table. I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed because it's already late and I haven't started filming. Okay, shh, 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 shh. So I'm gonna just set you guys up far away and just give you a quick time lapse on how I set up the room for filming day.
I feel defeated. Oh my gosh. You guys, it's nighttime. It's like dinner time. I need to make dinner soon. I have banana bread here. I filmed for four, a whopping four hours. That was a lot. That was a lot for my little body to endure. And now we're gonna be here for like another hour to two hours. But I got a lot done. But now we really, really have to handle these purge plants because the purge is tomorrow. Um, I want everything to be like settled and done so that I can first thing tomorrow take some photos and figure out my pricing and do all that. So let's just go through these. Um, and then I got to clean up in here because it looks like a hot mess. So I showed you guys the ones in here. This syngonium that I got from Amanda, um, I took a propagation of it. I took a top cutting and I'm gonna sell the bottom because this thing grows like a weed. And I think I'm gonna sell my big Graffitifora pertusa because I did take the top cutting from it. And I still have to water my Hoyas. Oh my God. <sighs> I'm gonna be here all night. We're just gonna be doing more repotting now. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm doing this again. But here is my big Rufitifora Pertusa that I'm selling. I know, it seems kind of crazy, but I took the top cutting. She um, grows really fast, so I'm not worried. I could chop this into two separate plants in case there are more people that wanted it but I feel like I have a better chance at selling it if it's a large plant. Come on. Whoops. I'm gonna take it off this lazy pole and I think I'm just gonna secure each of them onto a bamboo stake. Or I'm just gonna chop this. Oh, it's already two. Okay, okay. So let's do that then. I'm gonna chop right here. I'm sorry if you guys can't see anything. I'm the worst YouTuber ever. I'm gonna chop right here. And look at that. That's a great looking plant. There's a small part of me that's like, huh. That is a nice looking plan. I could just put that in my bedroom. But you guys, I gotta make, I need to make some money back because I have spent, I know I say this all the time, but those vet bills freaking wiped me out clean. I could chop this again. So like one and have three different plants. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I could, okay, let's just do that. Cause this is like actually quite large. Well, you know what? I think I'm gonna leave it. I think I'm gonna leave it. Whoever's gonna get this one, you are a lucky person because this is a really, really nice plant. Now the only thing is I don't know which substrate to put it in. Cause normally I would just take a cutting like this and stick it into some water, but I can't do that with this. I guess I could do moss. I'm gonna put it in this vessel because I'm trying to get rid of my vessels that have drainage holes. Sounds like a funny thing to say, but that's for real. If this comes toppling over, I'm gonna be very sad. So I'm just gonna immediately get this onto a pole just for stabilization, even though it's, I mean, it's kind of already standing on its own, but still a little bit wibbly wobbly. And uh, I want it to be secure when this person picks up just in case they're like taking a bus or something. Uh, and by the way, I didn't even tell you guys, we're gonna be doing a like group pickup here on Saturday. So Jing and Alice will come over and we're just gonna hang out in the lobby of my building and just have people pick up there so that we can get all of our pickups done in one day over a few hours rather than have to set up individual pickups. This is a lot of moss I'm giving away, but you know what? Really not. I'm not using a ton of moss anyway, and this is way too big of a bin for someone who doesn't really use moss that much anymore. 
Cutting number one is done. I hope this thing does not wilt. I think what I might do is try and I'm gonna put a bag over it and make sure this moss is really damp so that I can keep up some of that humidity since it's not gonna be picked up until Saturday and I don't wanna give them a plant that doesn't look like the photo. So this is such a great little specimen. Well, huge specimen. And then um, the second cutting is gonna be this guy here. And I think I'll just leave it on this pole and sew it like that. I'm gonna do this guy here. And again, fill with moss. Ow. <laughs> I'm hurting. I'm gonna actually water this one right away because it's like kind of thirsty. Kind of thirsty, it is thirsty. Second one, not as big, but rooted. Next one. Um, I kind of want my pole back because I don't have any more poles. But at the same time, it's like already established for the person that's gonna get it. No, you know what, I'm not gonna bother. That's way too much work, but I do want my vessel back, I'm sorry. I'm trying to think if there's anyone else in my collection that I can chop. I mean, honestly, like my plants in the living room are just growing insanely, but I don't even know who I would chop. Calm down. And it's mostly Anthurium, and they're all pushing out leaves right now. I was also thinking of taking cuttings of my New Guinea ghost, but I kind of like how big it's getting. But, I don't know. So many fresh roots on this guy. I think I'm just gonna leave it like this and I'll get it into a pot with drainage. Whoa, whoa, whoa. As much as I want my pole back and my tree fern fiber kind of, I like I need to pick my battles right now. If I hadn't just filmed a four hour long video, I'd probably have more patience to um, handle this the way I want to, but no. I just wanna finish this and eat my banana bread. I wish these leaves weren't facing outward. Like you guys need to look more presentable for your future, your future parent. Who's gonna wanna buy you when all your leaves are facing every which way? Okay, so she's done. Um, I can tell you right now that this one is ready to go to a new home as is. So is this one. I'm literally gonna sell this like this. I just need to add some more water. I'm gonna sell this like this. Same with this, this double-headed this one did not want to open. Double-headed Majestic. I'm not sure I should sell that because it's not looking too hot. Serpent's Chocolate. Looking pretty okay. I think I could just sell it like this. So it's really just these two that I need to get potted up. I'm just gonna do moss. I'm gonna cut off some of these ugly roots that I've dried up, just for curb appeal. <laughs> it's like giving sort of Vecna vibes right now and it's just not, it's not. Not good for sales. I really hope everything sells. I really don't wanna have to put any of these back. Elegans is done. And now I'm gonna put this little teeny tiny variegated bray marks into this tiny guy, which is the perfect size. Actually, I need to take photos of this stem first because people are gonna be like, why are you selling me an all variegated leaf? 
and I need to show that it has a lot of cream. Oh my gosh, my hands look so dry and pitiful. All right, purge plants are all in this bin. Maybe once the place is clean, I might have energy to look for more. And now the worst part of this job is the cleanup after filming. Oh, I just want to jump into bed and I really could, but there's a certain amount of discipline that comes with doing this because if you get used to just like leaving the mess, it just becomes habit. So I'm gonna clean, I will time lapse. And honestly, after this, I'm gonna go. Um, tomorrow, I think the only thing I'm gonna do for week of is just kind of show you how I take photos of them. Um, and I will let you guys know how the purge does. And then on Saturday, um, I'll let you guys say hi to Jing and Alice, kind of show you the stuff that they're selling. And then that's gonna wrap it up for, for this week because I am so tired. I don't have it in me. Oh my gosh, I have to water my Hoyas. Okay, I'll do that today too. But anyway, I gotta clean up. I'm so stressed out.
You didn't even hear me come in? No. You no. scared her sometimes. The <laughs> culprit every time. These headphones are... They're, they do its job. <laughs> they are soundproof. <laughs> you scared me. Dude, I filmed for like eight hours today. Mm -hmm. I'm... That's going to be really funny footage to watch back. Hi, oh my gosh, it has been such a crazy 24 hours. Um, I'm in a bit of a rush today, so obviously I really didn't do much yesterday for week of because that four hour video that I filmed, that repot, I literally edited it, edited it in one day and it took all day. Like I was editing from basically 9 a.m. until three in the morning, got it up literally at 9.59 today. And now I am um, rushing to get everything for the purge set up because I need to meet everyone for group pickup in 50 minutes. Um, in terms of how the purge went, um, it went just okay for me. The things that I thought were going to sell didn't. Like my Rafidophora Pertusa, both of them, the big one and the small one. My Albo Epi. And... Um, Actually, actually that's it. Um, everything else sold. So it was just those three that didn't sell. Um, actually more didn't sell, like some of the smaller ones, which I will just be giving away. So I created this little box of stuff. Like I have Manjula props. I think I have a majest I have three Majestics in here, a Glorious. Um, I have this Mikeins on a little thing. Like I'm giving away this whole thing. My Elegans and the Rei, the Syngonium. Um, and then I'm also going to be giving away oh, one of my crystal mags that I got from Lauren. So when Lauren cleared out her greenhouse, um, she had an excess of crystal mags. She gave me like literally a bunch of them. And this one is super cute because it's really, really round. And the emergent leaf has like a super pink sinus. But I have so many crystal mags and I need to make space on my Anthurium shelf. So I didn't feel good about selling this obviously because I got it for free. So I'm just going to be giving it away. But the only thing is, is I want my pot back. <laughs> but this is what's going on like what am I supposed to do so I need to figure out a way to like I don't know I don't have like another cover pot that it can go in um, I also took some trimmings of my mic ins so I'm gonna just pop this into like a, a little 
I don't know, propagation thing. Well, these are fresh cuts, so I feel like I can just shove it straight into a cup and they can worry about it when they get home. I'm just doing some quick pest inspections. I am going to be spraying these one more time right before I leave with um, some Captain Jacks. But I did thoroughly pest inspect before I even listed anything um, in the purge. And I, like, for the past few purges... Where are you? Oh. Um, for the past few purges, I always write a disclaimer that I have been dealing with pests and like to not purchase any plant if you're not comfortable with that or you have no experience with pests. Just because like even if your pest outbreak is like months old or even like a year old, I mean you guys know they just pop up. Like pests are just a part of this hobby so you know I don't feel good about like not disclosing it because I feel bad if they just like put it straight into their collection and then I was the reason that they had a pest outbreak and um I feel like people are I don't know I feel like people are like shy or something or like embarrassed to disclose when they have um pests but I, I don't know it's normal for me I mean I've been shamed before into having pests like oh I never have pests and you're obviously not doing something right well, I mean maybe I'm not but I have pets. That's just that's just my life. Um. Anyway, so I'm just gonna. Some of the new leaves on my micans are coming in so huge. I'm telling you guys, keep chopping your micans. That bad boy will reward you, and you can give away a bunch of props. Oh gosh, I don't know. If, I think I'll shove this guy with this prop because I don't think it's gonna fit. Dude, I am, I am seriously so exhausted. I like didn't get into bed till about 3, yeah, like 3 a.m. and didn't fall asleep till maybe 3.30. So, and then I was up today by like 7.45 because I had to keep editing, I had to make the thumbnail, I had to upload it into YouTube, like it was just a whole thing. I know that nobody pressures me to put out videos on time and every week, but I don't know. I'm just, I'm so neurotic about keeping on a schedule and like, you know, I told people that I was going to have a long video this weekend for the long weekend and I wanted to deliver. So anywho, um, those are my giveaway plans. Oh, what do I do? What do I do? Tell me you guys, what do I do about this? Oh no. Um, I could just, here. This is my last large pot. I need to really stop anyway with Lauren. Um, these are really the only pots with drainage that I like now or that I'm using because the drainage holes are so large. And also, I tend to not use drainageless pots larger than this, like in terms of plastic. It's always glass. So I'm just gonna pop it into here. Oh, maybe I can shove some, maybe I can do like landscape fabric. I can do landscape fabric or I can do moss. Maybe moss so it doesn't dry out. And landscape fabric, okay. Whoa, mom, you scared me. Okay, here's the tea and the four, one, one. I've got my massive box of moss here. What I'm gonna do is take some landscape fabric. These are just kind of like extras. So I'm gonna just like cut around this guy. I know you guys can't really see what I'm doing, but I'm in a rush. Like the pickup is literally downstairs in my lobby and I'm running late. How is that, how is this possible? But you know what else freaking sucks this morning? Um, so right after I was done filming, um, or not filming, right after I was done editing and I was waiting for the uh, video to finish uploading on YouTube, I was like, oh, I'm gonna be like ahead of the game. I'm gonna start getting ready while this is uploading. So like I literally, um, you know, got changed. I put on my makeup, I did my hair, and then I forgot that I was supposed to take a shower. I, take a, I had to take it all off and jump in the shower and redo everything, which is why I'm late. So I was kind of on schedule and then I messed up really bad. 
Okay, so I have landscape fabric covering the bottom holes. I'm just gonna fill the bottom with a little bit of moss. Just enough so that the roots can like touch it and then I'm gonna um, just give it a quick spray. I am very sorry to whoever is gonna get this, but it's free that you're gonna have to work for it. You're gonna have to repot it. So that's ready. Um, I'm gonna just chuck these in the shower really quick and give them a quick spray. And I think I might have time do I? I might have time to do one more thing, but uh, I'll see. Be right back. I'm actually going to be potting up two of the things that I sold. So the Escaletto and my variegated soda just because I don't want to give it to them like just in water. It feels very careless. So I'm just going to do some moss since I have an excess of it. I did spray these down with some end all, um, just in case. Like, I know that, you know, I feel like people who collect plants should just be cautious and aware all the time that like, if you're gonna buy plants from anywhere really, you should expect pests. But I still like, if I can help it, I don't wanna like give someone a plant with pests even though you know it's not like really it's not the end of the world but there's a sense of like wanting to give them a plant that's pest free that I'm paranoid about and I'm just gonna wipe her down so this was actually the top cutting of my plant so I don't know if you guys remember but in I think it was my last week of I chopped my escaletto for fern this was one of her like top wishlist plants and oh my gosh, that girl has been after this plant for so long and the whole time my Escaletto was just growing like crazy and it like didn't even dawn on me to just like chop it for her, hello. So finally, it got to the point where it was so like outgrown of its pole that I was like, you're, you're done. So I gave Fern like a pretty um, decent size, I think it was a two leaf cutting. I chopped the top for myself and then I kept the bottom cutting, which I have here that's now pushing out a new growth point. Um, and I was just like gonna keep this as an extra, but honestly, it's like, I don't really need it, you know? So um, I just decided to sell it really last minute. No regrets because it's going to my friend Selena, who um, is one of the sweetest people ever and it seemed like she really wanted it. So I'm super happy that she that she got it. I'm just gonna like label it with the names of the people. I'm gonna put like a little happy face or something. Oh my gosh, Pudge is honking. Pudge, you're honking, babe. Oh my gosh, these are just so stinking cute. Oh, I need to turn it on. Watch, let me show you. I call her Cell. I hope she doesn't mind. I never even asked her if that was okay. <laughs> It's kind of weird when I'm running on like no sleep, I'm in like a really good mood, which is, I don't know, I feel like that's backwards. And I'm in a pretty good mood considering I was <laughs> insulted on Instagram today. You know what? Instagram is so much tame, tamer than YouTube. Like this is the first mean comment that I've gotten on Instagram in a really long time. I used to actually get a few a week, but it just kind of went away. I don't know what happened, but you know, it's a constant thing on YouTube, like I'm used to it. So yeah, it was just this person that was like, I had enough of you, like I'm unfollowing. And I basically was just like, okay, don't really care. And then like they commented back and was like, I'm just so sick of you. Um, you're so vulgar and it, it makes you even more unattractive than you already are. I only like continue to follow you because you introduced me to Alice, but something, something. I don't know why someone calling me vulgar is a flex. 2023, a girl being vulgar, please. I'll take it. I will freaking take it. This is actually a really cute Sodroy prop. Look at it. Some of you are gonna be like, oh, mosaic. Calm down, everybody. 
This little freaking flower is so cute. It makes me want to scream. I almost want to whip. Oh no, I want to make myself one. Um, so I was actually going to stop the week of after the purge pickup, but I have a I have an Ethereum here that's kind of struggling. So I want to just do one last repot for this month's week of, and then I will sign off. But I am going to um, force Alice and Jing to be on camera today and they can show you some of the stuff that they're selling. So I'm just going to keep prepping all of the stuff for the purge. I'm going to get everything labeled and then, um, yeah, see you in a sec. So this is all free stuff here. I'm kind of tempted to take this brownie eye, but I feel like I'll regret it in terms of space. <laughs> More free stuff. All my free stuff. And a puppy. Look at the puppy. So, um, it's a little chaotic, so we can't really film right now, but I wanted to show you this plant that Alice just sold. Her Florida beauty is freaking massive, you guys. Mine was growing so much larger than hers, and then she just, I don't know what she did. She did like a blood sacrifice or something. Look how huge, like literally the largest leaves I've ever seen on a Florida beauty. And this caterpillar is massive. And then she also sold this little hybrid here. And Manjula. Gloriosum. And um, her homegrown her Yeti eyes. Terrible lighting. Wow, I look freaking awful. Okay. Come say hi to you. just want to see which camera you use. What? It doesn't... Oh, it's already filming? I'm like, what? I really like it. I thought it was a pot. Stupid moron. <laughs> oh, this thing is freaking awful. Okay, I'm just going to put the strap at the This top. thing is overflowing. Because it all fell down from the top. And from in here. <laughs> this is a lot cooler. <laughs> Did you say hi? No, I was like, what camera do you use? I'm like this. <laughs> <laughs> so Jing is here. Where are you, Jing? This lighting is so terrible. So hey, so the gang's all here. <laughs> so um, I was going to like set up the camera right away and show everybody. <laughs> everybody's high. <laughs> I was gonna show everybody's plants, but then there was like a heck of people like before we were even set up, and I got scared. So now we're left with one plant, <laughs> basically. <laughs> Jane trying to get. So this is a. Uh, Indo Pappy Hybrid. Indo Pappy Hybrid. That I thought, but it's this big now. Oh, is it, did it like die it's back? So pretty. Yeah, because I had to shave the split up. <laughs> oh no. What did you say this one was again, Alice? Shigma. <laughs> Shimala. Shimalala. Shimalala. Gladys. Gladys. It was sold as a home alumina. This is Very a good. freebie and nobody Very wants good. it. I thought this was going to get snatched in a heartbeat. Really? It looks so sad. It doesn't. I mean, I feel like anyone just wants big plants. And then we've got a bunch of humidifiers and... Terracotta pots. Terracotta pots. Oh, look at this. Look at this <laughs> watering can for babies. Like it's just it for a baby. It's so cute. Where is this from? Like, it's actually from my old office. Oh. And they were throwing off a bunch of stuff, so I took it, but then I was like, this is so hard to use. I can't use anything with this spout. It just... Can you keep it and make another video? Maybe. <laughs> you should, huh? <laughs> if no one takes it, I'll just use it to make a reel. We are back where we started this morning. Um, the afternoon sort of just flew by, honestly. Like, I had all these plans to film and, like, you know, have you guys spend some time with Jay and Alice, but things just kind of went seriously really, really fast. And I didn't really even have a moment to kind of think. So um, now that I'm back, I want to show you guys my miniature little haul. So Jane gave me this little pot 
which I think is so precious. Like it's actually such a cute little pot and it, yeah, it's like a self-watering pot. And I think I'm gonna, I don't know what I'm gonna put in here yet. Um, I might grab something from my living room shelf. And then I think this is like a little, like so you can hang it or something, but I'm, I'm not gonna use, I'm not gonna use this. But let me show you the big plants that I got that has Alice's hair in it, entwined. Oh my gosh, it's really in there. I need to pull out her hair. It's like wrapped around a petty hole. I think it's kind of... I forgot how long her hairs are. What you're looking at here is a plant that I somehow knew was always gonna end up with me somehow. This is the Anthurium brownii that she um, adopted from Erin, I think it was last Christmas. And uh, yeah, I was actually surprised that Alice took this home because Alice is really not the type to take home large plants. Whenever people give plants away, she tends to take the smaller ones and I think it really is because of her um, space constraints. And I'm not gonna sit here and say that this is like the most mind-blowing plant ever, but I have been wanting a larger plant for my bedroom. That one is low light and that has a larger wingspan and that can sort of make the top shelf look bushy because I'm giving my rubber tree to my sister-in-law. So this is going to replace it and I figure since it's in moss, um, I think we should just get it out of here and repot it now. And um, there's also another plant I want to repot. It's not doing that well. This is my Anthurium Dark Phoenix. So this is by far the largest leaf I've ever grown on it. It grew on my living room shelf, but I think something, I think I might've over fertilized this um, and I can kind of pinpoint when I did it. And yeah this like bright yellow mark showed up. And for me, when I go a little bit happy on the, or heavy on the fertilizer, I tend to see things like this. And um, obviously, you know, I love no drainage, but if you hit your plants with too much fertilizer um, in no drainage, they will show you right away if they didn't like that. So I wanna get it out of here. I wanna get it into some fresh pond kind of rinse the roots a little bit and then um, repot it. So I think that's the last two things we're gonna do before I wrap up this week of, because it has been a week. I am very tired. I don't know if you guys can tell. And I'm filming for the vlog this weekend too because um, we got a new bed frame and uh, I wanna set it up because I'm, I'm really anxious to do it. So let me, I should have put a shirt on. I'm so hot. I'm, I'm gonna change, I look my, I'm sweating. Okay, okay, okay. So I'm gonna just start removing this huge guy from this moss. I really thought I was not going to untangle another moss plant again, but here we are. The roots actually look really, really nice and juicy. And this moss looks pretty clean still, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw this back into my bin and use it. So weird, it smells like, it smells like peppermint. It smells so good. So I think I sort of figured out how I can get the best lighting with my camera in this plant room because it gets really challenging. Um, I don't, I mean, I'm sure you guys have been able to tell, but like the light isn't the greatest in here when I move like in and out of the frame or even when I move plants around, like the light balance, the light balance, white balance changes so drastically, but it's helped to turn off all of these lights behind me and only have lights coming from um, in front of me. But anytime I have something like this, like this white uh, box or something, like whenever it's in the frame, the white balance sort of changes. So I think I need to switch to like dark colored um, trays and stuff. Oh my gosh. 
There were two layers of moss. Oh no, this one is really, really root bound now in the center. I know that you guys can't see it, but like, I like peeled out, or I peeled away the outer layer, and now the true, the true mess is underneath. Oh. This is not, this is not what I signed up for today. Okay guys, so here's what I'm thinking and I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna talk to you guys about it first before I do it. Um, I want to grow ferns. I have been wanting a fern for so long. Um, the maiden hair fern is one of my favorites. I really like, you know that really wispy one? Is it the asparagus fern that I'm thinking of? They're so, so pretty. I just like, honestly, I have such bad track records with with ferns that um, I haven't even really tried to have one again since 2000, 2020, I think is the last time I had a fern. And actually, um, I had one that was growing pretty well in no drainage with um, I think it was Lekka down at the bottom and then moss up at the top and I just kept it wet all the time but um, Once the weather started warming up they just I don't know they just declined they did really really well over like fall winter and spring and then in the summer they just all took a crap because I had a staghorn fern set up that way and Another fern I have a second fern. I remember I posted about it on Instagram but I didn't like that I had to water it every day. So um, Alice kind of gave me an idea of maybe I can use my aquarium to grow the ferns and just, I don't know, I don't know. So I'm thinking about it. So if you guys have any advice for me on fern care, that would be appreciated. I'm still not through this really, really dense center of moss. You guys, I'm like actually losing my patience. <laughs> this is pissing me off. It's like it never ends. There's just an endless amount of moss that comes out of this root ball. All right. Honestly, I think this is like the most that I have patience for. I'm just gonna have to be really careful with the watering since there is quite a bit of moss still in this root ball. Um, I've broken off a good amount of roots, but it still has a really, really large um, root system, as you can see here. Like, it's gonna be fine, but... And I'm kind of thinking of using that new pot that I got from the thrift store because I kind of wanted to use it in my bedroom. And I feel like this might be perfect for it. I'll show you. Oh, I don't, I don't think I would have shown it on this channel. I think I showed it on my vlog. I get confused now. We're just gonna wipe these, oh, wipe these leaves down a little bit because they're a bit dusty. Oh, you know what I can do? I can answer, let's do like a quick Q&A because I have some extra questions that I didn't answer from my last Q&A. Your thoughts on Calathea and Maranta or Fave Hobbies right now outside plants? So the first question, um, there's actually quite a few like Calathea and Maranta that I find really pretty. And when I um, first moved to Canada, I actually had like two or three different kinds, but they all hated me. Um, that was actually my first experience owning like any Maranta. And I loved mine so much. I thought it was so pretty. But I don't know, they just like never, they never liked me. And when I realized that like they were only doing well when they were in a cabinet or near a humidifier, I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I can do this. I think if anything, I might try a Maranta again, but um, maybe not anytime soon. I think that if I set up maybe another area of plants. Like I've been wanting to put another plant shelf somewhere. I just don't know where. I feel like I'm like maxed out on space now. But yeah, it would be really fun to have different kinds of plants like 
adding marenta, adding some pothos again. Kind of like the more, um, I guess, common house plant that you can find at like any garden center and not necessarily like imported aeroids. Um, so yeah, I actually find them really pretty. It's just I'm not the best at growing them. So that's why I don't have any. The second question, any hobbies outside of plants? <laughs> I was just talking to Vince about this because um, he was, you know, he was sad about like how much I had been working this week and he's like, man, like you just, you know, you don't slow down and all you do is, is work. But then I told him, I'm like, if I wasn't working, like what would I, like honestly, what would I be doing? I don't have any other hobbies really outside of plants. Like I think that I used to like consider like painting a hobby, um, like drawing and illustrating a hobby, but because illustrating is part of my job, I don't really consider it a hobby anymore. And with painting, I have to be in a certain mood. It's not like, oh, if I have free time, I'm just gonna paint. Like I have to wake up and, and be like, I wanna paint something. So that's not a hobby that I could just do anytime I have some free time. Because if I try and force it, it ends up just being really frustrating actually. Yeah, unfortunately, no other hobbies outside of plants. I feel like I'm very um, uninteresting that way. Unless you consider reading a hobby, I, I've gotten back into reading. But other than that, nothing. How do I feel like some of these are not looking cleaner after I've wiped them down? I guess I could use a microfiber cloth. A microfiber cloth is so good for plants with this texture specifically. It's kind of like the chia pens. Let me show you. Like, let me um, compare an emergent leaf. So uh -oh. this is a brand new leaf that um, fully unfurled, um, I wanna say, last week and these are the older leaves that I've used a microfiber cloth now I don't do it all the time because when you do like abrasively rub a plant whether with any kind of um, like water or soap or anything you do strip it of its natural oils but for the chia pens I don't know sometimes I just like the look when they're like really shiny like this and um, the plant seems fine. It hasn't, you know, shown me it was unhappy that I <laughs> was like rubbing it with a microfiber cloth. But yeah, if you just compare like the textures of one that's been wiped with a cloth and one that hasn't, it's like the new leaf is super like matte and dull and then this one's really shiny. But you know, the the dull dullness of the chia pens is actually really beautiful. So, oh. I'm gonna leave it. I'm not gonna be touching that plant and making it shiny anymore. But just saying, I could probably take a microfiber cloth to this guy and make it super, super shiny and, and wow, but also I'm kind of lazy. Okay, so let me show you the vessel I was thinking if it fits. I was thinking this one, it's like this like smoked gray, vessel I thrifted this for a couple bucks and it's so pretty and yeah I was thinking of putting it on my living room shelf but because there's so many plants on there it would kind of get just like washed like or what is it it would just like blend into everything else and you wouldn't really like appreciate it so I kind of wanted to use it for a plant that was like standalone and I feel like this might be the one and I sort of am liking the combo of this pot with the plant. Um, I don't know if anyone else feels this way, but I feel like plants and pots, they don't all match. Like for me, I feel like it's, it's kind of like choosing an outfit and some of them like look good together and some of them don't. I think this is gonna be the perfect vessel size for this root system. I kinda love it. It's too, dude, it's so bright. Ow. I had to mix some soil. So I have 
indoor potting soil, perlite, um, some old pond fir bark, and um, what is that stuff called? Charcoal, biochar. I feel like this year I've repotted way more soil plants than pond plants. I could be wrong, but this is like the third batch of soil I've made in like a month. I probably could have added a little bit more fir bark, but I'm running low, so I don't want to use that much. But at the same time, okay, so where this is in my bedroom, it's right next to a south facing window, but it doesn't get that much light. Um, typically through the day because it's kind of behind a wall. So it's like a window, a little wall, and then it, the shelf is right here. So I feel like it should be a, like slightly more chunky so that it's not holding onto too much water for too long. Damn it. How do you deal with the algae growth on glass containers? Um, I talked about this I talked about this in my no drainage um, video, but I used to flush my vessels with hydrogen peroxide. And um, I'll link that video in the description. And when I was flushing, the algae growth was so much less than it is now, even with plants that were exposed to sunlight and grow lights. Um, but flushing as many vessels as I have um, on a monthly basis was not ideal. And then since introducing mycorrhizal inoculants to my plants, I have just completely stopped doing that. Um, algae is not gonna like, it's not gonna destroy your plant. It's not gonna kill your plant. It just looks bad. And also it's really just on the outside of the vessel. So if it bothers you that much, honestly, the only thing you can really do is repot or make sure that all of your plants have a cover pot because um, blocking the light from the vessel is going to slow that down like immensely. So yeah, unfortunately, that's the only answer I have. But now I sort of just live with the algae. And if there are plants that are like on a windowsill that I know I really do not want to deal with like the algae growth, I'll just make sure to put it in a cover pot. How do you water tree fern fiber? Do you leave a, a reservoir? Um, yeah, so I actually treat tree fern fiber the way I treat soil. I basically, I mean, pretty much any plant I have in tree fern fiber is going to be in a no drainage vessel. So I really just water it the way I would a soil plant and um, I typically will not leave a reserve at the bottom with tree fern fiber unless it has like a layer of leca or perlite down at the bottom and that's pretty much what I do for my soil plant as well. So all you want to do is make sure like you're not watering just from one like side and letting the wicking do the work because the water isn't going to be dispersed as evenly as if you were to water like around the entire perimeter of the vessel. And that's how I tend to water all of my plants anyway because I want to just distribute the water as evenly as possible like right from the start, especially with plants in the choose a pond. So yeah, um, that is my answer for that and also I highly recommend mixing Sorry, I'm gonna be completely blocked for the next little bit, but um, I recommend mixing amendments into your tree fern fiber. I've enjoyed the use of um, tree fern way more now that I'm mixing it in with other substrates rather than just doing it straight. So yeah. Okay, we're pushing it a little bit with this root system. I should actually make sure that there's no broken roots on this thing. Oh, look at that. It's dropping like flies. And because I have so many broken roots, or so many roots have broken, and I just yanked a root off because there's too many in here, um, I'm gonna hold off on watering for a few hours and I'm just gonna let those roots callus up. You basically just wanna treat it like, like a stem cutting 
so that you allow like the tissue to sort of heal before you introduce water to it. I know some people just water, but that's just my um, process when I'm doing sort of an abrasive repot like this. And I will be inoculating this with great white. Also, just a fact no one asked for, but I find that when you're repotting a plant that's been really, really rooted in sphagnum moss, that the shock of transition from moss to specifically soil, if you chop up a bunch of moss and add it to that soil, or you just allow some moss to be stuck on the roots, my transitions have gone so much better rather than like trying to get it bare root and starting fresh. And I think it's more so because it's like, it has a substrate that it's used to and acclimatized to still there for that transition. But yeah, it's, it's a good thing that I still have quite a bit of moss still stuck all around this root ball so that it can comfort it in its time of change. That's how I like to, to put it. This thing, I asked for a plant with a wide wingspan and um, I definitely got it, I think. Ow, 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 a splinter, mom. Okay, she's done. That was like one of the worst repots I've done in a while in terms of stress levels and uh, difficulty. That was like medium to hard or maybe just hard. There's like a huge gap, but I'm hoping that <laughs> they'll, find their way to the light eventually. Um, there's always sort of a bit of growing pains when you're um, repotting an established plant that's been in the same spot for a while. You have to like allow it to find the light. Okay, so um, let's do, let's try and find something to put in here. I think I'm gonna do my um, hybrid from Amanda. This is the Papilla Lemonum uh, crossed with a Wonder Boy. And I think it's gonna be the right size. I mean, it's not a lot of more space. It's not a lot more space than what it has now, but I think anything will help and it looks kind of cute in there. The root system looks surprisingly um, decent for as many times as I've let this plant dry out severely. I'm still getting used to um, having Anthurium outside of a greenhouse, even though it's been over a year now since I've, you know, attempted to grow my entire Anthurium collection outside of a greenhouse, minus some of the ones that I have in an XO because they're acclimatizing and stuff, but it just dries out so fast. I don't know why this stem is curving. Look at, it's like bent. Anywho, I think this will fit in here. Oh, that's so much better. Yeah, that's, that's doable. I'm not way too excited for that. And I wanna get some of this stem in here as well because the stem was like sticking straight out of the pot and I feel like this plant would be sizing up a lot faster if the pot was bigger, but it's not doing bad for have never, I mean, it's never lived in a greenhouse to my recollection. I don't like how this stem is curved. It's like kind of throwing me off a little bit. It's almost like it's crawling or something. It looks a little weird. It's like sticking straight up or it's like facing up because the freaking stem is bent. I'm hoping that it just like eventually sorts itself out. I've never had that happen with an Ethereum before, but yeah, that was a quick repot. I'm actually really happy and I kind of want more of these vessels and I wish they had more in larger sizes. Maybe I can try and find some online. Um, but let's get this Dark Phoenix out. Where's my dark? Oh. Dark Phoenix out of here and rescued. So Alice was actually the one that repotted this for me many moons ago now. I can see some roots that don't look great. 
and some that do look really, really good. So this one is starting to rot. Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit of root trimming here because it's looking a little spooky ooky. Um, I think what it was, I always try and um, think of what can like cause something like this. And I have come to the conclusion that my plants on the very top shelf in my living room, they don't do that well because they get um, so little light. And um, I think I need to install not like a track light because I'm only renting here. I'm not trying to like install a whole track light, but I might need to do like some sort of like Soltec light hanging from above, even though I don't want the leaves to face upward. But pretty much any plant that I put up there, if I'm not super, super um, modest with the watering, they rot um, because they're not getting enough light. So this dark phoenix has been living on the top shelf for two weeks now. Um, it was before this leaf pushed out um, when it was still emerging, or this one, this new one. Um, it was living on a lower shelf that had more light, but then I babysat, I babysat my friend's Rottweiler and I wanted to put this one higher up just in case she got to it. And yeah, it just sort of went downhill after that. So I need to figure out a uh, solution for that shelf somewhat soon um although you know summer's coming but still even then i don't think that my um, shelf is going to be getting enough light even in the in the summer i'm still happy overall i just yeah i need to move it down from that shelf and not have it so high up i'm going to answer two more questions before i sign off here do you mainly use tree fern fiber mixes as a permanent substrate or just for props? Right now, I'm not using tree fern fiber as a permanent substrate unless I'm mixing it with soil, which has been a pretty good mix for me. Right now, one that I can think of that has taken well to um, a tree fern fiber moss mix is, who are you? My, so my Patricia is in a soil moss, soil tree fern fiber mix um so is my heterocraspidon my albo epi is in a moss tree fern fiber mix v my vchi super narrow which acclimated like a freaking dream is also in a soil moss mix so unless it's mixed with soil i use it as a rooting substrate and a rehab substrate but not as a permanent potting mix I also just find it way too expensive to use on its own as a um, as a substrate. So like, let's say if I was filling like a six inch pot, like six inch, like a six inch pot of six to eight inch pot of tree fern fiber is a lot of tree fern fiber. So not only can I not afford to use it as a permanent substrate, but it's just not my, it's not my preferred. I wish I had remembered to move this thing back down because this leaf would have been really nice. But I mean, I, I will take this over a, a plant that like toppled down because Millie was all up on my shelf. She took a nibble of my mykins. <laughs> it, was, it was a very challenging week for sure. What I'm also gonna do, um, since I find that it's easier to mix perlite into pond when it's wet, and what I mean by easier is that <sighs> pond is obviously a lot heavier than perlite, and so if it's completely dry, the uh, pond tends to sink to the bottom and it doesn't get mixed really well. So instead of using regular water, I'm using um, mosquito dunk water. And I've been doing this for weeks now for these freaking fungus snacks. But I do, find, I do feel like it's getting better, particularly in my living room. Um, not so much in my plant room. But I'm definitely more diligent. I would say with, um, sorry, so loud. I'm more diligent with my watering on my living room shelf than I am with 
the plants in here mostly because since everything for the most part is in a greenhouse I tend to get a little lax because they're a little bit more self-sustaining in a higher humidity higher light warmth environment and I spend more time in the living room so when I'm just like watching tv or like waiting for something to cook I'll just like walk over to my shelf do some watering and they just get a lot more attention than my plant in here surprisingly so I've been really good about um doing like mosquito dump treatment out there so just like I did with um the anthurium brownii I'm gonna not water this for a little bit so allow some of those roots that I um, trimmed off to callus over a bit and heal over and then I'll be re-inoculating this with um, great white oh I was gonna answer questions um, so I answered that about the tree fern fiber Okay, this one isn't, this one isn't plant related, but it says, I'm curious about your sensitivity to sound, but not pudge. Power of love. <laughs> so if you guys don't know, I freaking, I feel like I talk about this all the time to you. I'm probably so tired of hearing it, but um, I do have very, very uh, strong sensitivities to sound. It's gotten worse as I've aged for sure. It's, uh, it mainly really started with um, noises that come from other people. Chewing, coughing, sniffing, sneezing, the sounds of people gulping, the sounds of people chewing, the sounds of people using a straw, just any kind of sound that comes from the human body, it like, it makes me very very like uncomfortable and I almost can't focus like my brain it's like um, like I hear like white noise and it's just not white noise but like like a, it's like a buzzing in my head and I just immediately forget what I was saying or what I was doing and I just get so hyper focused on that sound and how much I hate it and with Pudge, it actually wasn't really bad ever um, I never minded any of his sounds that he made which was i think it's because it's coming from a dog and not a human um but as more time has gone on i've become a lot more sensitive to his sounds um his sn his snoring and his like snorting his pug sounds those don't bother me at all like i actually don't even hear it whereas some of you guys are like i can't watch this video because all i can hear is your dog um, and even when I'm editing, I'm like, oh, I didn't even realize you could hear him. But a sound that he makes that drives me, like, I cannot, I can't take the sound of it, is his licking. He does this thing where he, like, licks into the air, because he has allergies, and so I think sometimes his face itches. Um, so when he's, like, almost due for his, um, his shot, uh, he just licks into the air. And he'll do it for, like, 30 minutes straight, um, or, like, licking his paws, or just... Licking anything, I can't. I can't do it. It's, it's like too much for me. Um, and even now, like with his just breathing sounds, you know, we have his breathing checked at least once a year. Um, he's been seen by multiple vets. I'm just so paranoid about him being comfortable. That I was like, are you sure he does not need, you know, um, the surgery for his nose so that he can breathe better? And every single one of them has said no, that he doesn't need it. And you know, we do the thing where like we get him hyped up and he's like breathing really heavily and I want them to know like what it's like at its worst, I guess, when he's really high energy. And still, they were like, no, he's he's totally fine. But because of, you know, the way that uh, the flat-faced dogs are, like there is a sound at all times really when he's breathing. Sometimes he doesn't make any sounds at all, but for the most part, yeah, there's always like a sound that comes with his breathing and um, it's fine if I'm just around the house, you know, doing chores or like, I don't know, watching TV, I don't care, but like when I'm filming and I'm trying to talk and think about stuff that I'm saying, I can't focus. It's a different sort of distraction in my head than like when Vince sniffles. When Vince sniffles, it's this like, oh, like it just makes me seethe. And that's like really like anything if like my sister gulps too loud like I literally just want to you know and sometimes even me um, I remember I was on a flight once and I had head um, earplugs in and I was drinking a coke um, and I was 
you know, gulping and the sound of the gulping in my ears annoyed me so much. I was so annoyed with myself. I was like, I hate you. You're so gross. And um, anyway, so it's, it's like a weird thing, but I don't really, I don't know. It's not something that I, you know, I'm super concerned about. It's just kind of a, I would say like a quirk that I have. Yeah, I, I'm not as sensitive to Pudge's sounds as I am with Vince. But it's not just Vin, it's anyone, anyone that makes a sound, it just, it bothers me. And that's another reason why I don't like going to the movie theater because when people eat popcorn, the sound of the popcorn um, rubbing against each other, it's like styrofoam to me. When they chew it, or even when I chew it, and it makes that squeaking sound, oh my gosh, I have goosebumps. I can't stand it, I can't. But anyway, yeah, I hope that answered your question. <laughs> it's just a weird thing, I don't know. Ah! <laughs> <sighs> was I just talking a mile a minute or was that all in my head? Um, anyway, you guys, I'm wrapping up. I'm so happy to be done. This week was a lot for me. I don't know why it felt so chaotic, but I kind of feel like I say that every week of. And it really never gets any less chaotic. But I'm glad I at least got this out of the way early enough in the month because it is only the 8th of April. Oh, it's my cousin's birthday. Hold on. I don't want to forget yeah it's only april 8th and these week ofs don't go out until the last saturday of the month so i'm ahead of the game and i'm feeling good so thank you guys for watching i hope that i gave you a good mix this week i feel like i feel like there was a good mix of everything you got to go to the shop we got to do stuff here you got to see alice and stuff got to see some cool plants and um I hope it was everything that you wanted and more. Please let me know if there are things during these week ups that you'd like to see more of, whether it's like watering or time lapses or cleaning. I don't know. I like, you know, the week, the week is ours. And um, I kind of just do like truly the things that I need to do, but I want to make it enjoyable for you guys too. So if there are anything specifically that you come to the week of for, let me know so that I know how to tailor it more to what you guys want and what you guys need to get motivated to get your plant chores done too. And that's it. So again, thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you liked it because it helps us a lot on YouTube and I will see you in the next one.